Now, we see stories both in the Australian and the Fin Review today that um, Jewish Australians are defying the new Albanese government warnings to leave Israel while, that, while they still can and to not visit Israel. We're seeing that people are saying, or Jews are saying, they feel safer in Israel because of the horrific anti-Semitism that we're seeing in Australia. And so we have seen the Australian government has upgraded its travel advice. They're now saying do not travel to Israel and to any Australians there that they should come home. Now, James, from my perspective, there is no question it is physically safer here in Australia. And having just been in Israel last week, having to listen out for sirens that warn of incoming missiles and then have to get down on the ground. I mean, it, it just is, it's alarming. The Iron Dome does intercept most, but not all of the rockets. And then, of course, even if they do intercept the rockets, there's the danger of falling shrapnel, which does injure Israelis. But then when it comes to as a Jewish person expressing your identity, showing your identity with a mug and David or, or, or other, you know, jewellery or, or clothing, there's no doubt it's safer in Israel than Australia. So I want to ask whether this concerns you, that the level of anti-Semitism we're seeing in Australia that's been allowed to take hold is so bad that we're seeing a group of people now feel safer in a war zone than here. Shari, it's deeply distressing to read stories like this and I've also heard stories firsthand from members of the Australian Jewish community in Melbourne and Sydney that they are contemplating moving to Israel because they do believe they'll feel safer there and that's an absolutely remarkable thing to say when you think about it. Israel's under attack right now from three terrorist organisations and a very menacing uh, regime in the Iranian state. Uh, and so that people would feel safer there than in Melbourne and Sydney in Australia is a travesty and actually, frankly, a stain on our great country. It's something that we have to fix and it can only be fixed with two things. The first is political and moral leadership from the very top, from the Prime Minister, saying that we'll never tolerate this anti-Semitism, that Jews are welcome in Australia, that they're part of our country, that they enrich our country. And the second is fixing this law enforcement crisis that you were talking about before and actually mm. making sure the laws that are on the books are enforced and extremism and extremists feel the consequences of their behaviour because until that happens, they'll continue to be emboldened and Jews who've lived here all their lives, who've come here and fled the Holocaust, who've been here and can trace their uh, descendants back to the First Fleet can feel safe again in our country. Yeah, it's, um, it is a really sad state of affairs. And, and by the way, when I... Because I spoke about this in an article in the Sunday Telegraph and then I, I posted the article on X or Twitter and the comments under it, people just say, leave, go to Israel, get out, we don't want you here. So the anti-Semitism is there in black and white. It's, it's astonishing. Um, and I don't think any of them were ABC employees, by the way, but you never know. Now, Kevin Rudd has caused a stir. He's got a new book on Xi, as in Xi Jinping. Uh, this is a revamp of his old thesis in which he argued that the world will be most at danger under Xi's leadership. Um, now, James, I want to see if you agree with this, because he says that if China is successful in invading or reunifying with Taiwan, then this will see a period of US decline. So if his assessment is right, do you think this therefore means that America should intervene to stop China from invading Taiwan? And we've just seen in the past couple of days those really aggressive war games that 125 uh, military aircraft from the PLA mm. and also the naval vessels encircling Taiwan. Shari, I think I'm going to be first to line up at the bookshop to buy Kevin's book <laughs> because based on the excerpts that I have read, there's a lot that I agree with. In fact, it sounds an awful lot like the kind of things that people like me and Andrew Hastie have been saying since about 2017. In fact, the kind of things that Kevin Rudd used to criticise Andrew Hastie and I and others uh, for saying. So it's a welcome change of heart from Kevin. Uh, based on what I understand his argument is, I think there's a lot to agree with. There's probably two things that I disagree with. Mm. One, I think he overemphasised the extent to which Xi Jinping represents change rather than continuity in the Chinese Communist Party. I think the most persuasive evidence is from people like Rush Doshi, uh, whose book The Long Game really sets out that uh, nothing has fundamentally changed about the trajectory of the Chinese Communist Party uh, under Xi Jinping. He might have just accelerated it. And the second is he makes a remarkable argument that once Xi Jinping leaves the stage, 
China will return to more moderate leadership under the Chinese Communist Party. I don't share that confidence at all, particularly mm. because basically every analyst got Xi Jinping wrong. They said that he would be a moderating influence and he certainly hasn't been that. So I don't think we can rest on our laurels and assume uh, that that's not the case. To your earlier question, I think what it commands of us is to be as strong as possible and to work as closely as possible with our allies to deter Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party from doing something incredibly reckless like invading Taiwan. Mm-mm. I think the comment that Joe Kelly made because he was the journalist who interviewed Kevin Wright about his book, he said that Penny Wong and Albanese should read this book because it's a, a wake-up call. There seems to be this complacency in Australia at the moment towards uh, the communist regime in China. But, but I agree with you. And not only do we not know who Xi's successor will be, so therefore we don't know whether they will be more authoritarian or, or worse for the world, but also there's the fact that she has eliminated many of his rivals. So, you know, anyone more moderate, we just don't know what's where they are, what's happened to them. There have been many mysterious uh, disappearances. All right. James Patterson, really appreciate your time. Thank you.